thanks for joining me this morning it's uh it's a beautiful morning out a little dark out still got some things to share with you Hey, greetings, it's Fred in Alaska. Sorry, it's a little dark. Uh, hopefully it shows up better when I edit. You can see there's a there's a road up there with cars driving by. You can see some ambient light from Wasilla. Again, I had to get out here before it started raining. Um, Nightdreamstalkradio.com. Uh, the link will be in the description. Uh, that's coming up. September 15th, Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 6 p.m. Alaska time. There will be a, a link on their website that you can watch it during it or the replay, uh, free of charge, of course. Uh, I want to thank James again. And uh, it should be, should be interesting. Pretty large audience over there. We'll see what happens. Uh, what I wanted to share with you today... Hold on. Uh, let me see if I can get some some light it may be a little noisy but i'll kick on the the headlight so you guys can see me i know uh let's see here let me set that right there that's gonna be a little loud hopefully you guys can see me a little bit here i'll turn the handlebar so it's not glaring yeah, it's pretty loud. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna kill it, but yeah. I apologize, I don't mean for it to be dark. It's just what it is here. It's that time of year, you can't really... Sunrise, if I was to wait till sunrise, it'd be uh, 10 p.m. Or not 10 p.m., 10 a.m. I apologize, I'm, uh, I'm down in a gravel pit right now. As you could tell from the opening footage, I was, you know, doing doing Alaska stuff Fred stuff anyway so what I wanted to share with you today um, there'll be a map at the beginning of this and that's of the Kuskokwim River where Benson and Terry started their what was supposed to be an adventure about 20 years ago now uh, 
they were basically going to do uh, some fly fishing for trout and they wanted some brookies and some other stuff they weren't sure but they made their plans to get an Alaskan adventure now uh, they both used to live in Anchorage now uh, I believe one is in New Mexico and the other one's in Arizona but irrelevant uh, they didn't move because of this they moved for jobs and family after this situation so keep that in mind so the orange dot is the start of their journey and there should be smaller dots that kind of go from east to west and then there will be a red dot marked one a red dot marked two a red dot marked three and then there'll be a blue dot more towards the west and that's where the the confrontation happens so it started off uh it was supposed to be a week-long adventure um they got dropped off on the kuskokwim they had firearms uh one had a lever action 4570 the other a 12 gauge and they had a 44 magnum pistol now from what uh hold on i'm gonna set this down from what benson shared with me it, it took a while to get the uh to get the map lined out right as far as the the points and stuff because we had to go back and forth and i'd send them screenshots anyway so it started off the, their first day they were so excited uh it was early fall there were still some mosquitoes not a whole lot and so they were basically finding ways of combating the mosquitoes uh, they didn't bring any bug dope or anything so they had biting flies and mosquitoes to deal with and so they were going along just kind of mitigating the the train and and trying to figure out the best possible movements now in that map that topographical i showed it shows a dry creek riverbed running from east to west real squiggly well at this point in time 20 years ago or so it was not dry it was anywhere from ankle to knee deep going on through there now <laughs> uh a lot of those points on the river looks like horseshoes coming off of the river understand it's not that we have crazy rivers up here what happens is during breakup when the ice is moving out uh, it'll dam up and at those dam up spots overflow will arc out come around and continue on down the main channel so that's why you got all these little loop-de-doos and stuff on that on the Kuskokwim River it's from ice backing up ice damming and uh, the water finding a way so they start their journey and they're going down this creek bed and you know the 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 initial point of it from what benson was saying it, it there was birds and other wildlife sign for the first day and a half now they were not in a rush they were going to take their week actually it was 10 days but they were gonna it ended up being a week but they're gonna take their 10 days and make the most of it do their thing see alaska get it uh, get some adventure in well as as the second day started they got up to absolutely no sound whatsoever it was dead quiet and they both got the heebie-jeebies and felt like they were being watched now Terry had gone to uh, basically look around and Benson told him don't go too far and you, you know jokingly says if you see anything interesting just let me know well little did he know what was about to happen because Terry walks off and he's gone 20 minutes he makes his way through brush and stuff and it starts to open up into some tundra probably 75 yards away from this creek Terry said that as soon as he busts through the shrubs into where it opens up, immediately, 120 yards in front of him, this figure was standing looking at him, like dumbfounded. Uh, he said he couldn't make out the full expression on the creature's face because it was silhouetted the way the sun was coming up and so on. He, it, there was no clear definition of facial features other than he could tell it was looking right at him and just kind of tilted its head to the side like, what, what am I looking at? While he's tilting his head like, what the hell am I looking at? So Terry said he cuts back follows his back trail gets back over there yells for benson benson is tidying up camp and stuff and trying to be bear safe putting away their breakfast stuff and their clean utensils and terry comes pale as a ghost saying hey there's a big dude over there let's go talk to him 
So at this point, Terry didn't relate its size to other anything other than a man because where it's in open tundra, there's nothing to uh, kind of assess its height. There was no little trees or shrubs near it for him to get a good guesstimate on height. He just assumed it was a big dude and assumed he was in furs. Now, when Benson and Terry come back through the same path, uh, they get into the opening and there's nothing there, right? So Terry's like, I'm telling you, it was standing over here. So he goes, well, show me. And so while Benson stood there watching, looking around, Terry started walking over that direction. Then he, it started dawning on him how far away it was and started to mentally assess its height. Now, immediately he, he doesn't make it all the way out to the, to the spot where he's seen this thing standing. Immediately, he, once he starts realizing, wait a minute, this thing was much bigger than I thought, he shuts down his whole, he, he stopped going forward and turns around, comes back, meets up with Benson. Benson's laughing at him like, what are you, what's going on here? What did you see? Was it a bear just standing up looking at you? And Terry, not wanting to be made fun of, was like, probably, that's probably what it was. Uh, you know with the light and everything which it, it was clear that morning But he, he just went along with it must have been a bear stood up looked at me freaked me out whatever So he, he let it go and they continue on about their day They continue hiking that that creek and as they're hiking along that creek uh, You know, I put I put little points in there uh, just to show general uh, direction to travel because they go from east to west now they make it between halfway distance between the first marker with the red dot and the second marker with the red dot and that's where they camp for their third night now from what Terry said as they were uh, getting ready to uh, strike camp or uh, put camp up uh, he kept feeling like he was being watched and he kept turning his back and it ended up to where he got so creeped out he moved the tent as close to the water's edge as possible while Benson was doing other stuff uh, he Benson was setting up a little cooking area and so he wasn't really paying attention to what Terry was doing and then I guess they got into a little bit of an argument uh, once Benson saw how close to the water uh, that he was strike, uh, putting these tents up and so he's like, hey, 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 we can't be that close. If the big rain happens overnight, we could get, you know, potentially flooded out or whatever, and we could lose gear and yada, yada. So Terry's like, look, I feel like I'm being watched. I'm getting the creeps over here by this brush. Benson assures him, hey, look, it's probably just that bear being curious. It's it's already seen us. It's probably just young and, and following us around. Well, if it comes in on us, then we'll take care of it. If not, then we'll leave it be. Terry agrees, goes on with what he was doing changes the area which he set up the tent and what he did what he ended up doing was taking some of his fishing line and taking empty cans and kind of making an early alert uh, early alarm system early warning system a little trip wire if you will with cans attached to the end of it and he had it laid out so whatever tripped on this thing coming out of the brush it would jingle cans right next to the tent and so while Benson was cooking Terry was setting up his little you know early warning system and, and Benson gave him shit he's like look that bear ain't gonna, gonna come in on us you know we'll wash the food trays we'll be good anyway so that night they're they're sitting around the campfire and they're both pretty tired and beat up and bug bitten and you know they, they want to call it and so just as it was starting to get dark uh probably between 11 and midnight they decide they're gonna crawl into the tent and no sooner than the tent was zipped, they heard the cans jingle. And so immediately Terry is jumping up to unzip and stuff. And Benson says, hey, we just got in the tent. We probably bumped it and jingled the cans. Calm down. Terry calmed down. And from what Terry said, he had an ominous feeling. He couldn't explain it. He didn't know why, but he just kept feeling, he kept getting this ominous feeling. Now, uh, of the two, Terry smoked. So a little bit later, Terry makes the excuse, I'm going to step out and smoke a cigarette and make sure that fire's dying down or whatever. And, and Benson was already half asleep and said, all right, you know. 
so Terry gets outside and he he's on high alert. He's sitting there trying to figure out, you know, what made the cans jingle because they didn't bump the tent enough and the way he had it set up, he knew that them getting in the tent wasn't going to jingle the cans and so he was real curious. So he's sitting there watching the tree line and behind him is the little creek and it's running it's making a little bit of noise but not a whole lot it wasn't very fast moving and so he said as he was watching the trees in front of him in the brush he was looking at every shadow studying it real hard you know um he had the 44 magnum and his rifle was right inside the tent but he he had a firearm and he felt secure it in the moment uh, he sat on the little log and was smoking a cigarette, just studying, studying real hard. And he realized he was hearing a weird noise and it was coming from like in the water. Uh, sounded like someone moving through the water. So immediately he's like, oh, this fucker is backtracking us and figured I'm going to I'm going to get the drop on this bear because the noise was coming from the opposite side of the tent from what he said. So he creeps around to the side and jumps out going, ah, yeah, yeah, just yelling, trying to scare what he thought was going to be a bear off, right? Just give it a good startle and run it off. Well, that's not what was in the water. So this thing was standing about midway in the creek, just staring at him while he's yelling and stuff and didn't flinch, didn't make a move, wasn't intimidated in the least bit. Uh, he said it was about eight and a half foot tall from the best he could guess because it was in the water and he wasn't sure exactly how deep the water was there. So, you know, um, eight, eight and a half foot out, out of the water. So as he's sitting there, dumbfounded, Benson heard him scream and holler. And, and he, he's making a fuss because uh, Benson's a little older than Terry and didn't want to be dealing with terry and shenanigans are bullshit you know what i mean he's yeah you know cussing and fussing and as benson starts moving in the tent and uh basically coming out of the tent this thing hears that and when benson comes out it turns around and walks away from them and benson was only able to see the back end of this thing going up over the bank into the brush and from what Benson said, he did not see what Terry did at that moment. All he saw was something dark going into the brush line. Fair enough. You know, I, I mean, he, he didn't full on see it. He didn't full on see it. So Terry's telling him what he saw. He said, this thing is huge, you know, at least eight, eight and a half foot tall standing in the water there. I yelled at it. It did nothing. You came out, tells him the whole thing. Benson is, is his curiosity is peaked and he doesn't. He doesn't fully believe that's what Terry saw. He believes Terry saw something. He's just not sure if he was misidentifying a, a young juvenile bear standing up. That's what Benson had stuck in his head, right? He, he freely admitted that. He goes, I had a bear stuck in my head. Well, as he's basically chastising Terry a little bit, he, he tells him, if next time you see that bear, you effing, you, you fucking shoot that thing. And it's obviously stalking us. It's a good enough read. We'll just, we'll shoot it. We'll report it, whatever. Terry's like, okay, well, you know, I, I, I didn't want to do that, but I will. So as they try to go back to sleep, which was very difficult for Terry. Benson wasn't as startled as Terry. So Benson said he, he had, he went right to sleep. You know, uh, he wasn't quite in shape for hiking or anything like that and so he decided you know hey i'll just i'll crash out well in all honesty uh, from what benson said he was exhausted fighting off bugs trampling through the water it was taking a toll on him he wasn't used to backpacking around with a bunch of gear and so it was catching up with them you know and so terry once he did fall back asleep uh he woke up hours later with those cans rattling and he jumps up he's in a panic he comes stumbling out of the tent he's trying to drag his rifle behind him and and benson accidentally tripped over his trip line and spilled breakfast benson was not happy he was cussing terry out uh, they had a little bit of an argument you know uh benson had to remake breakfast and wasn't happy about that and it, it was it was a bad start to their morning so as they are getting what is left of their breakfast done, um, they start hearing weird noises off in the distance, way, way off in the distance. They're like, wow, that's weird. 
they couldn't make it out they were suspecting maybe a coyote but there was a lower tone to it they couldn't quite place right so they just left it at that because it was far enough away it wasn't of immediate concern now when they continued hiking they they're going along and they start coming across these strange tracks that they could see across the creek and the particular part they were on they just got over this tight bend and there was they could see impressions in, in the gravelly dirt right at a cut bank and they're like oh it looks like that bear was walking this way so they again they, they didn't go and examine the tracks but they were large and they you know Benson was going with bear and Terry wasn't going to argue it because he knew what he saw and he figured the way this thing was showing itself from what Terry said Benson would eventually see it well they continued on uh the beginning of day four uh is when they saw the tracks on the creek bank across from them so come up to an uneventful very quiet they said for day five and six until going towards the end of day six now they had made some ground and they they were tired uh they said they got two good nights of really good sleep um just from the hiking that they were doing you know very terrain from sandy muddy to rocky pebbly cobblestone like you know and through brush sometimes you know when they had to find a way around the creek because it was it just wasn't conducive for hiking through so just as they were setting up camp on day six benson had to go and check some things out he had been hearing a weird whistle click sound that had been get, and he said it seemed like it was directed at me like he kept thinking terry was trying to get his attention but terry was right in front of him when he's hearing this and the noise was coming from uh benson's left so finally he, he's like i'm gonna go check out over here real quick whatever whatever and and terry sat down and lit a cigarette because they were uh in the middle of popping the tent up and they're taking a quick break so as terry's smoking a cigarette benson walks off to his left which would be approximately uh due south now as he's walking due south he gets maybe 50 feet from what he was saying away from where terry was sitting and terry could see him clearly uh he hadn't gone into the trees yet benson uh hears that kind of a weird kind of a like chatter kind of sound like uh like click popping a little bit of a whistle a uh, slightest whistle and it was really intriguing it, it really uh and he doesn't know why but it really struck him caught his attention and, and he was so curious about it uh he said reflecting back on it he felt like he was almost uh hypnotized as strong but uh enchanted he you know enchanted by this this whistle sound it was very uh melodic it had a, a certain melody to it that was a bit soothing you know from what benson was saying so he turns and yells back at terry hey i'm gonna head off this way just a little ways if i'm not back in two minutes come looking for me terry's like fuck i'll come with you now so terry puts out a cigarette grabs his uh 4570 and starts following uh benson now benson according to what terry said was maybe 35 40 feet in front of him clear clearly visible and they were approaching the tree line and as they got closer to the tree line terry said benson stopped got down on his knees and had his head turned and was staring into the brush and so terry was confused by it he thought maybe his friend was having some medical issue or something you know because he comes he, he said he trotted up set his rifle down and was looking at him and benson looked like he was uh almost in a trance staring at the he, he was slack jawed mouth open just staring into the brush and terry nudges him with his knee he's like hey snap out of it snap out of it shakes him a little bit and benson looks at him like hey you know what the hell and from what benson said when he was approaching the brush everything went blank and he was he he can't he doesn't know what was going on for a brief couple moments until terry was nudging him and then he realized he was on his knees and was staring into the brush and so he stands up he's like that was weird you know and they both got the ebgbs 
So they decide, hey, hey, let's not go into the brush. Let's, let's just get back over here to camp. I'm going to set up my string cans and all that stuff again. And we'll, we'll you know, get our sleep and, and continue on. And they, they, they couldn't shake the creepy feeling. Uh, from what Terry said, he is usually a calm, collected guy, and Benson even more so. It takes a lot to get their pulse rate up. But from that point, it was they were high tension. They were kind of arguing amongst each other for nothing until they caught on to it and realized, hey, we're, we're hypersensitive. Let's not take it out on each other. We're, we're here in this together. So as they're sitting there by their campfire, uh, they made a habit of not staring at the campfire, but letting it be in their peripheral so they could watch the surroundings. Uh, they said it was really hard to uh, even attempt to go into the tent because they kept hearing movement just out of eyesight. And it sounded like big movement, but they could not pinpoint what it was. And Benson, because he hadn't really seen anything yet, reverted back to saying that bear must be back. So let's be ready. Let's just put it down. Uh, it hasn't lost interest in us, so it's fixated on us. We need to put this bear down. Terry knew it wasn't a bear. He had seen it twice. Said, well, I don't think that's a good idea that we go shooting at this thing unless we need to. And Terry reiterates, hey, Benson, you know, I know you think it's a bear, but look, this is what I saw. First time I saw it was on two legs. Second time I saw it was on two legs. It walked away on two legs. It swayed its arms like a man. It, it was shaped like a man, a big man. And Benson starts to realize that Terry's not just trying to mess with them. So I was checking my rear tire. And so as he realizes that, you know, Terry's really not trying to pull his leg about this whole man thing, uh, he starts asking him questions about its features and this and that. And again, it, it, there wasn't much to add other than it was shaped like a man, moved like a man, was on two feet and very large. Uh, they hadn't seen any details. <laughs> they had brought one flashlight with them. Uh, because that time of year, you know, it, it wasn't a whole lot of darkness. Just a, a handful of hours at night, and they were sleeping during that time. And they only brought one because, you know, it, it's just what all they needed in their own minds at the time. Uh, so they get the flashlight out because it's getting on in the dark, and they're still highly uncomfortable. They can't even, even fathom going to lay down yet. Benson said something struck him funny as he was sitting there facing Terry to stand up and look behind you. Benson happened to have that flashlight, so he stands up and turns on the flashlight, beaming in the same general direction that he initially started walking that fell in that weird trance, right? And as soon as he turned on the flashlight, he saw this thing. Uh, they said it had ashen gray skin, it was squatted down, it was just about 20 feet outside of camp in where the firelight wasn't illuminating it at all. Uh, immediate bright red eye shine, the uh, ashen gray skin, and they said his face was real, real wrinkly. Uh, real, a lot of fine, fine wrinkles, and I've seen the same thing myself. But And uh, they couldn't tell what color the eyes were because they were... Uh, reflecting eye shine, right? Red eye shine. Uh, they said the knees looked like they had some kind of calluses on them, the way it was squatted down, and its hands were humongous because it put up one hand, kind of, kind of trying to block the light a little bit, and started showing its teeth. Uh, they said big block teeth like a horse. Uh, the jaw looked really, really wide compared to the top of the head, and the eyes uh, were pretty wide set. Uh, they said it almost looked like a rough, uh, like someone wearing a parka with a ruff around it because it looked like a rounded head but with like a, a hair ruff around, like they're wearing a hood with a, uh, a fur ruff around it. And once he beamed it and it put its hand up and showed its teeth a little bit, it stood up. They said when it stood up, it was it, all of its massiveness was shown in that moment, right? Uh, Terry was immediately on his feet, uh, had his rifle in his hand, and was pointing at this thing. And as soon as he leveled his rifle at this thing, it screamed. Uh, Benson fell down from the scream, startled the shit out of him because he was in shock. And once he fell, there was no longer a flashlight on it as Terry went to shoot. Terry fires a shot off. 
the the screaming was still going on as all it was all commotion uh so there's screaming a gunshot fires off benson hits the ground uh scrambling to pick up the flashlight beams back over there again and terry's standing next to him at this point saying holy sh i told you i told you i told you and benson's like calm down i seen i seen it uh benson said he thought he was gonna have a heart attack he he was struggling to calm himself down so he didn't have a heart attack uh you know uh he was in his late 50s at the time and he he immediately felt you know that surge and that adrenaline you know like a, a ton of bricks on his chest and so he calms down and they hear noises way off in the distance uh they guesstimate a couple hundred yards scream uh sound like stuff breaking trees breaking and all this stuff and they didn't know what in the hell to do it's just them two on this creek bed you know with a tent you know and a couple firearms they they were dumbstruck they did not know what to do uh their their meeting point was days away uh they still had approximately four days left before their friend was supposed to be going back and forth on the portion of the river to pick them up to where their designated meetup point was so benson said that him and terry sat there back to back uh, after they collected some firewood shoulder to shoulder with the flashlight uh, you know as much as they could and they kept feeding the fire in the darkest point of the night back to back the whole time they said three separate times this thing came in on them uh, almost like probing the boundaries probing how close it could get uh, they suspect that uh, Terry really pissed it off uh, they said it was uh, when they saw it these few times as it, it, it would almost like press towards them they would pop off some shots uh not trying to kill it but trying to like whiz shots past it to scare it away uh you know every time they would do that it it kept looking like it was favoring one arm kind of like it, it had one arm uh like it wasn't using it like it, they thought it would so they suspected that maybe terry when he fired when benson fell down that maybe it struck its arm they, they still don't know and and probably never will I, I mean there's no way to figure that out but so as this happened th uh, they said three to four times they they were getting really worn out by the last time it happened uh they said the last time it happened it came in uh from the back side of their tent to where they didn't have eyes on it at the moment they kept looking at the spot where it kept coming from emerging from uh the direction that uh benson had gotten a little hypnotized and off to their right hand side so all of a sudden off to their immediate left where the tent was the tent goes flying he said uh benson said that this thing grabbed it by the top and flung their tent away from uh, in the direction directly away from them and it just flew out of sight uh he said it happened so fast uh he said it had they been inside the tent they they probably would have flown you know 30 yards you know it, it it flung and with it being a nylon tent it didn't go all that far but it was fast it, it, and it was very powerful the way it was just cinched and ripped out of the ground the the guidelines were all snapped in a heartbeat uh the can string line that was quasi attached to the tent went bling bling bling, bling flinging after it uh into the water and stuff and so they they stand there kind of shocked for a second as this thing is standing there as well looking right at them uh they said it was very it, it was very forceful like it was challenging them and they they said at this point they opened up directly at it uh started firing shots and after the first couple shots broke this thing was already hauling ass away uh they said it was heading due south when they stopped firing and so they sat there and sat there uh, Benson picked up smoking for a little bit that night. He he got a cigarette or two from Terry, stressed stressed out. Uh, they don't drink, so they didn't have any little party favors or anything like that along with the mini brown water. And so they sat until it was light enough in the morning, and they started heading due west. And that was the morning of day seven that they started heading due west. Uh, they made it to the river, and after about five hours of sitting there now in the meantime as they were traveling and as they got to the river they heard this screams and weird yells periodically to the south of them 
they said they don't, they don't I couldn't tell how far but it was loud and so as they got to the river's edge and they were sitting there uh, an elderly man and an elderly lady were skiffed by and they waved and waved and they were trying to flag them down they just kind of the elders kind of waved and continued on and they're like shit you know well if there's someone out on the river there'll be someone else out on the river so they sat there you know a good good few hours and then a little while later you know after that a couple hours actually uh, a younger guy in the same skiff that the elderly people were in came zipping down river spotted them turned around come up uh, they told them who they were who their friend was that dropped them off they happened to be relatives said hey just just get in what, what's going on you guys weren't supposed to be ready for a few more days and they tell them they tell them what happened and the younger guy just kind of chuckled didn't respond to it left it alone uh, Benson said that when he talked to his friend that had dropped him off you know the week before for them to start this journey it wasn't until he was meeting back up with his friend that he remembered the advice his friend gave him and he blew it off it, it meant nothing in the moment until after the fact right his friend told him his native friend told him do not mess with the hairy man and left it at that Benson thought nothing of it didn't even mention it to Terry didn't even think nothing about the hairy man it wasn't until everything was done he remembered that uh, I want to thank Benson for the effort he put in uh, working on that map getting getting it as close to uh, and as accurate as possible um, again orange dot is a starting point red dot number one is where Terry saw it red dot number two is where it was in the water behind the tent red dot number three uh was the uh initial stuff in and the blue dot is initially where the confrontation happened um so i want to thank him uh, i want to thank terry it took a while to get this coordinated because they live in two different states and have two different lives at this point they're still still good friends they didn't they didn't lose their friendship or anything like that um, again, Night Dreams Radio. Hold on a second here. Night Dreams Radio. Uh, Night Dreams Talk Radio, I'm sorry, dot com. There'll be a, a link in the description that's coming up Friday, uh, December 15th, 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. We'll catch you on the next one.